It is truly unacceptable that many men today want to test their PSA and they get turned away without a referral. A couple of days ago, there was an article in an Australian newspaper that advocated for a complete rewriting of the guidelines around PSA testing because a lot of doctors today discourage the use of pr uh, prostate specific antigen testing for men that do not have symptoms because that might lead to a biopsy or treatment that might not be necessary. Specifically, a guideline that GPs are under no obligation to refer men for prostate cancer screening is now under review after a urologist raised the alarm that aggressive cases were being routinely missed because many primary care doctors were following outdated advice that did not recommend screening of asymptomatic men. Well, why is that the case? Well, I talked in another video about some things that you might do that spike PSA tests and give you a false reading and you can find that in the description or my channel. So many men who were doing those uh, mistakes got a high PSA test and then their doctor was ordering for a biopsy. And a biopsy is a surgery at the end of the day, is an invasive procedure that uh, costs a lot, it might cause other problems, and that's why they didn't want to do it. But that's the practice that was done 30 years ago. Today, we shouldn't do a biopsy to see if we have a prostate cancer. Because at the end of the day, a biopsy only takes a small piece of your prostate and it might miss the prostate cancer. We have imaging options that we can see the entire prostate that are non-invasive. We shouldn't be discouraging men from testing their PSA. Today, one in six men will get prostate cancer in their lives and that's an insanely high percentage. Prostate cancer is not a rare disease and we need to encourage men to do PSA tests at least once a year after the age of 40. Because when we catch the prostate cancer early, that not only that will save lives, which is the most important, but if we're talking about the system and how much uh, cost the system has and how overburdened it is, then it's actually in the best interest of the healthcare workers to catch the prostate cancer early and do those blood tests every year so that the, the, the cost of the more intensive treatments from when the men have prostate cancer doesn't go to both the, the, the patient and also the, the healthcare system. Before I move on to the rest of the points, if you click like on this video, it's gonna help spread it to those who need it and raise awareness. It is still true that today we need to do biopsies, okay? The big difference with 10, 20, 30 years ago is that back then, we did biopsies to diagnose if there is prostate cancer or not. Today we have imaging for that, like an MRI or a CT scan. Once we do diagnose that there is prostate cancer, that's when your doctor may do a biopsy to take a piece of the cancer, a piece of the tumor to uh, check what type prostate cancer you have any mutations that can help target the treatment. And it's crazy, that article reads that uh, Red Book guidelines are based on a 10-year-old US research that recommended against PSA-based screening amid attempts to reduce over-detection and over-treatment of low-risk cancers. How crazy is that? What does over-detection even mean? Like you have detection or not. There is no over detection and there is no over treatment. You treat something or you don't treat it. And continuing, it says that it was perplexing and difficult to understand why many GPs continue to follow guidance against testing when European research had demonstrated the clear benefits. The number of men dying of prostate cancer has risen by 15% between 2016 and 2022. How many more men have to suffer and die before those guidelines are changed. And if, I mean, if, if we're still not giving out for free a test that is so cheap, n relatively non-invasive, it's a blood, it's, it's a simple blood test, it's cheap. 
And we're discouraging men from getting it today. Because we're thinking they have to get a biopsy, which they don't. That's 20 years ago. Today we have imaging. Like, what are we doing? When we don't have physicians that educate us, that encourage us to go and get tested regularly. And also educate us what to do around the testing to make, make sure we have accurate results. And if we do have like a higher uh, value, then to quickly refer us to do some imaging to catch anything early. Because that's the key for surviving prostate cancer. Catch it early. Then, of course, it is a problem that is going to get worse and worse. You shouldn't be discouraged or intimidated by your doctor, especially when it comes to testing your PSA. Many of you are in your 50s, 60s, 70s. So you have been working, you have been uh, paying taxes, you have been paying your health insurance for decades. You are worthy, your life is important, and you need to be treated with respect, especially when it comes to such an important issue. You should have a physician that you have a good relationship with, and they're caring, and they want to take care of you. You should be able to go there with a list of questions every time you have any questions around your health and they should take the time to answer all of your questions. You're paying for their time and you're paying a lot of money probably. So they need to take the time to make sure you're educated because that's part of patient care. I want to change this. I want to make sure that men will have access to regular testing, will have access to physicians that will answer the questions and will have also, that's another thing I want to fight for, they will have physicians that if they do see a diagnosis for a cancer, that's when they're going to refer them not only to do imaging and all the tests uh, required, but also to an exercise physiologist to do specific targeted exercise to fight the cancer and reduce the side effects and to a clinic, uh, clinical nutritionist to, to change their diet to again fight the cancer and reduce the side effects. Because we have seen, we have a lot of evidence from research, from scientific research that show that exercise and diet modifications can play a massive role in the progression of cancer and also the, the, the management of side effects from the cancer treatments. Also, in my channel and in the link in the description on my website, I will be posting videos about exercise and what you should eat during uh, prostate cancer. Or even if you don't have prostate cancer and you want to lower your PSA, diet is very, very important. Regardless of what your physician may have told you, there's actual published research that has shown that uh, exercise and diet are extremely important to fight the prostate lower PSA and fight the prostate cancer. If you have found this video useful, you can buy me a coffee using the link in the description. And I want you to stand for yourself. You deserve things. Your life matters. You have paid for decades for all of those, of those things. And you need to stand up, find someone who works well with you, Ask them questions and request things. They are there for you.